And we're live, Facebook Live on Tuesdays. Here we are. So um, we're going to do our, our weekly pilot minute coaching. So every week we're following up on the kind of topic or theme of the week, and I'm doing a Facebook Live session for just a couple minutes. And this week is all going to be about uh, to manage or be managed. Uh, and so it's a totally different idea about your manager relationship. And so I'll wait for a few more people to come in. But if you're just joining and you haven't signed up for Pilot Minute Coaching, it's free. Looks so like we have four people. Um, say, hey, if you join, just comment and say, hey, oh, there's Amy. Cool. Uh, comment, say, hey, uh, I like to know that people are like checking this out. So, um, or do some likes or loves or hearts or the laughing emoji or something because they fly across my screen. Um, so www.pilot.coach slash minute. You can sign up for free weekly coaching. We give you in a minute an executive coaching insight that then you apply to your career. We follow up with you and give you customized coaching. It takes like just a minute. It's super easy and it's free. There's Benjamin. What's up in Denver? We got Amy in Chicago. Uh, if you are joining, like say hey, give, put a comment down there so we uh, so I know that you're here and I can say hi. Um, so manage or be managed. Uh, this is about the idea of your relationship with your manager. Most people kind of think that like their manager you know, is their boss and they kind of are waiting for instruction and they're waiting to be told what to do. But then every time I interview people, they say, gosh, like I really didn't like that my manager was overbearing, didn't trust me, you know, I had no autonomy, was a control freak. And so what you want to think about is are you doing what you need to do to instill that trust? Oh, hey, from Denver. See, I'm going to like in real time. Look at this. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. Um, see, I'm learning, you know, it may just be an iPhone and just Facebook, but it's not as easy as you might think. Um, so with your manager, a lot of people just are like, you know, yo, my manager's going to tell me what to do. And they kind of like rest and just wait for their manager to kind of crack their knuckles and, uh, whatnot. And honestly, then they get upset because then the manager does or says, where is this? Or why is that? Or show me this. And they're really hands on. And frankly, you're getting, um, as much, Hey Abby, uh, what's going on? Long time LA. All right. Um, and I saw Pedro in uh, Portugal, I think. Uh, so that's awesome. Um, so, you know, it takes, it, you know, a lot of times managers will be very hands-on because they think you need it. So to the extent that you're getting status, hey, Erica, um, just know that it's probably your manager feeling discomfort that you're really, like, on it. So what you want to think is, like, how do you really proactively, like, let them know that you're on it? So one of the things you want to think about is this idea of, like, efficiency through overcommunication. You know, if, 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 if my manager would status me and say, hey, Ben, where are we at on this? What happened with that, et cetera? I always kind of looked at that as a failure on my part. I'm like, gosh, they had to obviously worry or think about it or write a note or send an email or make a call or stop me in the hallway because I didn't let them know what was up. And honestly, nine times out of 10, I had good news or everything was totally fine. But for some reason, that they, they didn't get enough communication in the vast majority of managers want to know a lot more status than you're giving them. So don't worry about like, you're like, oh, I don't want to bother. Like, let them say, let them cry uncle and say no more. Like, just bury them, frankly, with status. Now, it's not like every two seconds or something, but if you give them a daily update email, no one's going to say that's too much. You say, here's where we are with things. Everything's on time. We had this issue. I'm taking care of it, et cetera. So that's the efficiency through overcommunication. So if you're just joining, say, hey, put a comment in there. I know we've got a number of people on right now. Um, and you know, just let, let us know that uh, you're on. We're talking about being ma to manage or be managed. Um, so this is a lot about like upward management. So when I was in management consulting, we talked about this a lot. It was like to the, the degree to which you're managing up. And this is a key, key, key competency as you de uh, develop in your career. Is you're more senior and you get higher through the ranks at, uh, in companies, like if you don't manage up, like it's not just your work. It's not just what's on your desk or your little team. It's letting people up and across know what's going on, have it be coordinated, involve them, manage the politics, manage all the interplay. Like that's what a lot of this is about. And so one of the big flaws in particular with like millennials I see is they're really good technically at what they do. They're an awesome graphic designer. They're a killer data modeler or they're really great in sales or they're, you know, super, super good in science or something. But what happens then is they get in this management position and they don't really communicate well with their boss or across. And then they're just kind of like held is like this kind of like not that they're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have promoted him or her. Uh, they were better in their individual role. You know, it's a bummer because right now they can't really manage the politics and things. So one other thing, a couple other things to think about, um, being in sync. So, you know, if we were dancing together, you know, and like, like a, like not like grinding, but like a, a slow dance, you know, we want to be in sync, right? And if I stumble a little bit or if I'm a little slow or flat footed or whatever else, like 
you know, you as my dance partner would want to figure out and accommodate and we kind of have a flow and a rhythm, right? Well, that's what you want to think about with your manager. Like, are you in sync? Like, are you on the same page? Do you have agreement on things and how it's going to be done? And the more you talk and the more you work together, the better you can be in sync. By the way, if you're just joining, we're talking about manage or be managed. How do you upward manage and create magic with your manager relationship? Uh, give us some likes or hearts and comments. Say hello just so I know who's on. Uh, that'd be great. So you want to think about, like, are we in sync? Like, if your manager assumes something is, like, a major priority for you and it's, like, a, not a priority for you, like, that's out of sync. If your manager thinks that something is going to be easy and it's really hard, you know, that's out of sync. If your manager thinks you have enough resources and you don't, that's out of sync. Um, if your manager wants you to do certain, something in a certain antiquated way and you don't, like, that's out of sync. So it's, con it's just this constant thing of, like, how do we get, you know, hey, Brian, how do we get, you know, in sync with each other? So that's, that's another thing to think about. Big, 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 big rule to remember, no surprises, okay? Surprises are fun if it's like maybe a birthday party or a romantic trip or something like that, Beyonce tickets, great surprises. Um, that there's a problem with your customer or that your IT system is out or that the intern hasn't been in the office for three days and we don't know if they're alive, like those are not good surprises. So if you've got news, good or bad, you want to get it to them quickly so they're not caught off guard. Managers look like fools if their peers, their bosses, oh, hey, I heard there was this huge blow up. Hey, Drake, I heard there was this huge blow up with, you know, whatever, some customer or this meeting went horrible. This sales call went in and then they go, uh, I don't, I hadn't, I've, um, and then what they try to do is they play cool. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, but we're on it. And then they call and they scream at you or they freak out or they send some flaming email or text going like WTF. Well, that's because they were caught off guard and it looks like they're not on top of it. So now your mistake or problem just got way worse because it's not just that. Now they look like an inept manager. Um, oh, Amy says, a wise manager once told me something that stuck. Try not to create work for your manager. Instead, support and help them be successful. So I think, yeah, that's, a gr that's another great tip. And thanks, Amy, for sharing that. If you guys have ideas or tips or thoughts, please share them. More comments are better. It's like a little, like, little tap on the shoulder. I like that. Um, yeah, sometimes people would, with me that work for me, Good people uh, would make less work for me. They take things off my plate and they make it simple and be clear. Other people would like just bring me this giant problem and throw it on my desk. And I'm thinking, wow, like I'm paying them to do work for me. Hey, Stephanie. And yet like they're throwing problems back at me. Like I would have fewer problems if they didn't work for me. So you want to make it really easy for your manager, whatever it may be. Like if you have a trip, you want to go on a conference. If you just go in and say, hey, like I want to go to this conference in Las Vegas. Like they just think of you at like a strip club or, you know, the Mariah Carey concert or something. Like that's not what you want to have. Hey, Stephen, you want to think like, like hey, here's the, the agenda. I'm thinking of going to these sessions that are focused on my job in this regard because I need to learn about data analytics. And these are the kind of companies and sponsors. I think I can check out some vendors. You know, I looked at hotels and program costs. The whole thing would be $4,000. Can I get approval? Like, that makes it easy. Otherwise, hey, Stephen, otherwise it would be, like, very difficult for your manager to think through all of those things. Just package it all up. Abby says, uh, I'm great at managing. find it difficult to have the people that I manage to do that. Yep. How do you create a game with those people? So that's a, that's a great uh, question, Abby. How do you create a game with people around management? Like, it's a little bit like maybe it's the be in sync game, you know, like, um, it's the anticipation game. You know, if you think about, you know, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna throw something, you know, can you, are you ready to catch it? You know, how do you create, you know, a metaphor and some things around that that say, hey, like, like to be a manager, is to, it's a very honorable thing to do and to be, uh, it, it's a very thing that makes a big difference in people's lives. People spend a lot of time at work and their manager has the biggest impact on their quality of life at work. So like turn it, like raise maybe the status of management. So it's not a, this crappy like wah, wah, wah thing to do, you know, but it's like this thing that's like, hey, this is about leadership. This is about making a difference and getting results and having some mastery and some, you know, some pride in yourself, frankly. So a lot of times it's just like really creating clear standards though, Abby. Like it's, it's just being rigorous to say, hey, you know, like here's exactly what I expect and I'm going to inspect that. And just being really rigorous about the, the, the things. Like my team knows, like people are on time. Like we don't have an on-time issue with our, our team calls or meetings. We don't have an issue with preparedness around like agendas or uh, we don't have an issue with where files are stored. Like it's all done in a certain way because I'm really clear and strict about that. But then there's no friction. So I can't have everything be my way, but there's a couple core things that need to be. And everyone's on the same page. So there's kind of like the pilot way of working, uh, which is a bit of the Ben way of working since I'm the boss. Uh, but it works for people, I think. I hope my team would say so. I asked them uh, because we're all on the same page. So no surprises. We talked about that. 
Um, the other thing is like to learn the styles and preferences of your managers. I'm shocked by the number of people that, you know, will be like, oh, like I love email. Like, you know, uh, uh, so I email the shit out of my manager and I send them emails all day. You know, I had a client I was working with a week or two ago and she showed me one of her people that works for this individual and the, the person like, you know, makes a lot of money, like multiple six figure money and had sent like 40 some emails in a day to this person. And it was like, what? Like, and it just was one of these things that they weren't even like, it wasn't even clear. They probably needed to send four emails that day. And so, and the person didn't want emails, the, the, the business owner didn't want emails. And so it's a great example to stop and pull back and say like, how does my manager actually want to communicate? You know, my team, you know, Amy, uh, when we worked together, Marsh, she knew I like to review things on paper, even though I'm a young guy, I'm kind of old school about that. And so she'd have my assistant, she was in Chicago, I was in New York, she'd have my assistant print out, you know, the materials for the meeting. And then we'd like, they'd be on my desk and like ready to go for the meeting. And she'd say, hey, like in your tray, and I'd pick it up and be, it was so easy. It wasn't like, oh, let me print this, let me run to the printer, let me put you on hold. And four minutes of our meeting starts with like friction and work for me. And oh, there's a line at the copier and then an annoying, you know, employee I have to talk to or something like that. Like it's, it was just so easy and it was so clear. So like some managers are going to want to talk in person or they're on the phone or chat or text, Slack, something like that. Others want email. Others want an in-person meeting. Others want a daily summary or digest. You know, I had a manager who liked to think about things. She was a noodler, if you will. So, she, you know, so if I, if I presented an idea and I was like, oh my gosh, like I want to go to that conference or concert or a conference, blah, 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 blah. And I get all excited and I get really energetic, as you can imagine, go into her office and like slam this brochure down and say, can I do this? Well, what would happen is then she would, she, would, she would go, well, let me think about this. Let me, you know, let me noodle on it. And then I have to follow up a week later and turn this big work. What I would do is I'd say, hey, I'm not asking for a decision now. Let me put this information in front of you. And why don't you consider it? Well, because I leaned into her preferences, which wasn't a high pressure decision, most of the time she'd say, oh, no, it's fine. You can go. No problem. But that's only because I worked in her regard, which was printed materials, with facts, the exact dates, the exact amount of money, I price the plane ticket out rather than, you know, Vegas, well, what's a flight to Vegas cost? Is it 300 bucks or is it 1,000 bucks? It depends on the week, right? So it was one of those things that I would just be really specific because that's how she liked to work. I had another boss that was entirely different that had no time for the details and wanted big picture. So if I explained a conference, I, he, the plane ticket, he could care less. It was more like, what, how does this fit into the vision of his career and his strategy? And I thought, put on a marker board and I'd say, hey, so I think that if I go to this, we can learn about this and meet these vendors and do this and put together this initiative that's going to position you in this way. And I had to really kind of sell related to his career and less about the expenses of the logistics. Super, super different preferences for people that actually ended up having the same job, two different people in the same role back to back. Really, really different. So Abby says, awesome. Um... Yes, rigorous. Uh, almost 200 people that I manage. Yeah, so, and Abby, we should like follow up as well. Like, I think that uh, there's obviously some tips and ideas and thoughts I could uh, give you. But, you know, frankly, like what's act called active supervision or really hands-on management matters. And I think in this day and age, we can get really lazy behind computer screens and smartphones and just think it's kind of handled or don't want to be bothered. But as a manager, that's important uh, that, that you're really active in that regard. And then really one of the things is to set the upward management standards to your team. So it may be that for your team, you know, you say, you know what, I expect a weekly call with each of my direct reports for an hour. And I expect you to schedule that with my assistant. Hey, Tara, I expect, you know, there to be an agenda for that call. I expect that all the things that we need to talk about for the week, I don't want to have 14 emails of to-dos every night at 7 o'clock. Like, I want that, you know, kind of batched up and we'll work through things together. You know, and maybe that, you know, like, so my team, you know, there's an agenda, they want me to review something, there's a link to the document we're going to review, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all about, like, setting the standards for them to work with you. Um, you know, other times people will come with like an idea and you say, gosh, like, um, that's great. Um, but before you come to me with this, like, did you check to see if we're already doing this or with anybody else? Or, you know, why don't you, you know, give me one page about how this might look? Can you put some pen to paper? Cause people, when people rush in with ideas and there's blah, 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 and they don't have anything on paper, you don't take them as seriously. And so sometimes you might just want to say, Hey, here's what I would need to kind of assess or think about this or the people we need to talk to. So their preferences, thinking about them as a customer or as a client. I mean, it can be even down to the, the smallest, smallest things. Like I, you know, remember a manager that liked things being, hey, Joe, that liked things being in this clear, uh, these clear folders so she could see what it was, but it was kind of protected when it would go into her briefcase or purse. And so we'd print out a deck and it would go into the clear folder. And it was just 
like we just bought a bunch of clear folders because those are the, I mean, they were like 10 cents or something a piece. Like, but it was one of those things that like she felt really taken care of and like kind of acknowledged because of clear folders, you know, because it was like, okay, this is how she likes to work. And if I brought her a manila folder where it's not waterproof and it's can bend and she can't see through it, it's like the smallest little things that show respect and deference and that you get it and you want to be in sync with how they like to work. So Stephanie says, sometimes we encounter managers who've never had productive upper management before. Um, yeah, so, so most people have not had good managers in their life. So when you start to upper manage, you're going to freak them out a little bit. So it's important to have a little context to Stephanie's point about that. So, you know, to say, hey, like, I just want to make sure that you're aware of what's going on. And we can talk about how you want to work together in this regard. But I just think that it's my job to make sure that you're in the know about my work. And here's what I'm thinking of doing. I'm thinking of having this weekly meeting with you, or I'm thinking of putting this agenda together or a summary email at the end of each day. Which one of those do you think would work best for you? Because I just want to make sure that you're always in the loop on the status of my work. So you kind of make them a partner. And again, it's back to like leaning into their preferences is you make them a partner in figuring out how that looks and, and what that you know is about. What you want to be careful of is if you're talking about what they're going to do with their boss or what they're going to do with their peers or what they're going to do with some of your colleagues, you can seem like you're a little bit like kind of heavy handed in controlling them versus just you may can gently say something. If there's an implication or like, let's say, for instance, some project is being worked on or some meeting or readout or client thing is happening and like maybe your boss's boss should attend, you can say, hey, is that the sort of thing that we think that like Jose, we should invite Jose to do? And, you know, that's the, the, you know, you can just kind of gently suggest it. And like, it's like, it's not like we should have Jose there or like, I'm going to, I already called Jose's assistant to see if he's, you know, that may like freak out your boss versus kind of saying, just like gently saying the idea. And they might say, oh, that's a great suggestion because what you do is you, hey, Michael, um, you know, you get a lot of resistance when you tell people like you should, or we must, or you have to, people are like, talk to the hand, right? So what you get instead is when you just float an idea or suggestion in a very gentle, unattached way, it allows them to hear it and to kind of deal with that um, rather than have it kind of be like kind of thrust upon them. And then anticipation. So you want to anticipate people's needs. You know, if someone's going away on vacation, you want to think about like if it, they're going away on vacation and it's Thursday and it's their last day in the office, do you want to go to them at to, at four o'clock with a giant problem or you need to get a new hire approved or there's something you need a lot of thought, thought, thoughtful feedback on, you want to work that a couple days in advance. It may be that they're going on vacation and you know that like their family drives them nuts or something and you give them a really good book to read. Like that's a nice way or, or you, you know, they want to read something, you know, and you put it again on those clear freaking folders or whatever it may be. Like that's a nice way to anticipate needs. So really thinking of them like as a customer, you know, if you think of like people that have a really amazing like personal assistant or uh, family office or those sort of things, like those are the sort of folks that, you know, um, really get and understand like, oh, this person is going to need like their phone charged. This person is going to need this or whatever. Hey, Rafe. Um, and so like just really thinking through all of those sort of, th those sort of implications and things around um, you know, what they're gonna need. Because if you treat them like a customer and there's that respect, when you go and you say, hey, like, you know, I, like I need a new phone or I need a day off or whatever, you're already in their good graces because there's a total you know, mutuality and a respect and a collegiality of professionalism because you've treated them with dignity and you've treated them with respect and you've been uh, you know, clearly caring about their needs. You know, it may be the sort of thing that even it's like you're coming back to, you know, you're going to get coffee and, you know, they, or they're always tired in the afternoon and say, hey, can I get you a coffee on the way up? Or you have a lunch meeting and say, hey, should I have, you know, your assistant order us lunch or do you want to meet for lunch? I don't know if you've got it on your schedule. Like it just shows an empathy that you care kind of about their needs. Um, and so I think, um, oh, yeah, so uh, I'm looking at Michael's comment, you know. Yeah, so I think there's the empathy about like right before people go on vacation, you know, um, whether it's the associate that works for you or you, just again, like thinking about it, like one of, you know, one of my teammates is going on vacation this evening, going to France, and we're trying to figure out as much stuff yesterday and last week, et cetera, um, you know, so it's not a total, you know, so he's not, you know, on the plane or in line at security trying to do work. Like that's not a great way to start a vacation or to get quality work done. So there's that kind of mutual respect in that regard. Uh, and, and those sort of things. So again, when you think about managing or being managed, if your manager has to status you and say, where is this at? Where does this stand? Is this done? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, not good. Like, they're basically communicating, 
I don't know where your work is. I'm uneasy about it. I'm worried. I'm anxious. Like that's kind of like a big failure. So what you want to always be doing is just, even if like sometimes what people forget to do is to tell people that things are fine. Because what happens is they only say if there's like something really amazing or more likely if there's a huge problem versus saying, you know, especially on longer term projects, hey, like this happened this week, this, this, these things got done, this got decided, this is moving forward, this is being assessed, everything's on schedule, just wanted to let you know. And that way they have a, a kind of a comfort and a calm because they're worried about so many things and they're always kind of like, what's the next thing that's going to drop or get messed up or whatever? And just allowing them to have that little bit of calm that they can say, oh, okay, like Ben's on it. He's got this. By the way, when they think about future projects and assignments and responsibilities, if you're that kind of person that like lets them know and then like takes care of stuff and it doesn't let things go to the last minute and has them blow up, they're like, you know what? This is a really important project. Why don't we put that Ben guy on it? And that's the kind of positioning that you want to, uh, to, to have in, in, their, um, in their minds, right? You want them to really think of you as like reliable and trustworthy, no surprises, anticipate their needs, know their styles and preferences. You know, my, like, like for instance, my team knows, like I like the phone. I like to talk it out. I'm an outward processor. I, I don't like tons of documents. I don't like, but if I do, I want it to be organized. You know, it's in Evernote and Asana. It's like, you know, that like that. We know we have the status calls, text me. I don't like emails. My team doesn't email me for like things. Like we, we do very little email because I like it that way. So you want to think about how your manager likes to do things. And if your manager doesn't like to get emails, don't send them 30 emails a day to try to look like you're busy because then you're, you know, over communicating in a way that they don't like. So uh, that's what I got for today. If you got more questions, put them in the comments. But uh, pilot.coach slash minute is our minute coaching program. It's free and it's awesome. We give you customized advice. People are doing really cool things in their career, starting training and school. People want, someone got a whole new wardrobe last week. Someone got art supplies. People are waking up an hour early. Moms are taking time for themselves. They're applying for new jobs. A lot of cool stuff is happening out of Minute Coaching, so pilot.coach slash minute. Um, and then just remember that mindset of manage or be managed.